on what's going on wrestling fans it is i steve Fall, and welcome to the show on today's edition i hope you brought a winter coat with you because i'm talking to glacier how are you doing today <laughs> i'm good bro how about you man I am doing super duper. I am layered, prepared for you. I, I have a vest on, a coat, a shirt. Oh. But honestly, it's such an honor to talk to you today. We're not talking about just wrestling. We're talking about movies as well. Yeah. You are now a movie star. But how are you <laughs> doing, sir, with the new spotlight on you in this movie coming out? Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my one of my very best friends in the whole world, uh, Steve Luther Wilson, uh, who wrestled as Luther Biggs uh, briefly in WCW. We actually met at the power plant back in 1996. And uh, and that's, uh, you know, we struck up a great friendship because of uh, just obviously our love from wrestling and then, you know, just uh, uh, being friends over the years. Uh, and, and so, you know, we love the wrestling world and we, we, we had good runs in the wrestling world. And uh, we, we also had a just a deep love for, for films and, uh, and especially uh, ensemble cast films, you know, like The Dirty Dozen, The Magnificent Seven, Expendable, stuff like that. And, and so um, we kicked around this idea for, for a lot of years and then we eventually decided to make it a reality. So uh, and, and the uh, finished product is something that hopefully we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about here tonight. Yes, of course, the Unbreakable Bunch. Yeah. Now, this is something interesting because you've seen the Expendables when you get Sylvester Stallone, yeah. you get Arnold, and you get all these action heroes together. But when I came upon the Unbreakable Bunch, I noticed the cast of characters in this movie yeah. is extraordinary. We have you, of course, we have so many others, but let's discuss this. You yeah. talked about how this was getting going and how you discussed it with your friend. But then how do you come together with the cast of characters? Because some people in this movie we have known as being real badasses in the yeah. real world, biting people's noses off you impossible. If that story <laughs> true, hot too. But how does this come together? How do you get this cast of characters together? Explain who's in the movie as well. Yeah, well, as you said, um, one of the main characters in the film is uh, Tonga Fafita, who the wrestling world knows as King Aku or, or Ming in WCW, which is where he and I first met and became great friends. And, and you know, we a lot of people throw the word family around a lot, but I, I'm telling you, like, uh, you know, when, when, when Tonga um, tells you he loves you like family, uh, it, you know, you, you take it to heart. And, uh, and I'm very, very fortunate to have that kind of strong, strong bond with him that transcends uh, you know, our wrestling experiences and our, our passion for wrestling. But, uh, um, you know, I, so uh, there were a couple of roles of when we first wrote this, uh, the original um, screenplay, a good friend of ours, John Waterhouse, who was an amazing writer, wrote the original draft. And then like most scripts, it went through a lot of revisions and to get to the final, um, you know, story. And, and a lot of it was just kind of cutting the story down to fit into a 90 minute you know, <laughs> 90 minute story, but, uh, but, but, you know, we had a, um, a huge ensemble cast of, uh, of characters that we had, we had really come up with and we had certain people in mind for certain roles. Uh, obviously, uh, we had a certain role for Tonga in mind and, and, and thankfully he, he jumped on board. He was probably one of the first ones on board. Um, uh, and then, and we have like, you know, there's several hall of famers in the movie, obviously, you know, the, the legendary career that Tonga had, you know, as world tag team champs with, with Andre the Giant and, and just the legendary reputation he has. <laughs> but, uh, but you now there's also, uh, there's a, a great role in the film uh, played by Diamond Dallas Page, uh, Stan the Larry at Hanson, the living legend Larry Zabisco, my former tag team partner and three-time world karate champion Ernest Cat Miller uh, is in the film. And, uh, and gang girl David Heath makes, has a great uh, appearance in the film. Big Ron Reese, who was uh, uh, was in Raven's Flock back during our days yeah. of the '90s, you know, he was also probably more affectionately known as the Yeti. You know, a lot of people. Oh, yeti. That is, yeah, that has kind of been given you know new life here over the last few years, which uh, which I think he really embraces, which is awesome. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, just a, a ton of great uh, legendary wrestlers in this film, and there's a lot of other legendary athletes. As, as a matter of fact, you know, I live in Orlando, Florida now, and. Um, one of the uh, the true boxing greats, he's, he's two-time world heavyweight champ, Pinklin Thomas, who held the world title right before Tyson did. And he's in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Uh, he, we, he lives right here in Orlando. We had a connection to him. And he makes a great appearance in the movie. I, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, but then, um, you know, we just had, you know, uh, just some, some other wrestlers that make appearances where I don't want to reveal everyone who's in the movie because there are some nice little surprises that pop up. But uh, And then some amazing actors. Uh, the, the female lead character is... Uh, Played by um, uh, Julia Denton, and Julia is an amazing, amazing actor. Uh, she uh, she's played opposite Paul Rudd, uh, Jennifer Aniston. I mean, she's she's an amazing actress, and um, 
and there's a role for a uh, imagine this kind of a uh, a little bit of a shady wrestling promoter in the movie, and uh, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> actually uh, yeah, imagine that you know, what? but uh, but it's played by uh, an amazing actor as well, uh, Adam Minarovich. And uh, if anybody who uh, I know, there's tons and tons of walk the Walking Dead fans out there. And uh, if you remember from the first couple of seasons, the the character of Carol actually endured through in, through the entire. 12 seasons. I think it was 12 seasons. Um, but in the first season or two, uh, she had the very abusive husband named Ed. And, yeah, uh, and so that was, that was Adam. Adam played that role. He, and of course he's, uh, he, he's, um, had a great run at, at all the conventions that's still, you know, being a part of the walking dead, uh, you know, phenomenon that, uh, and so, but, uh, but he's an amazing actor with a, with a really amazing level of comedic timing and, 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 and you get to see that in the film as well. But, uh, but yeah, so, and, and we wanted to make a movie uh, where Steve, where we had, uh, you know, a lot of wrestling action, obviously uh, with all the wrestlers that are in it, but we also wanted to make a movie that uh, one, we knew we wanted to have a battle, you know, something, some kind of force. And, um, and originally actually we kind of thought of, of kind of going the, the route of maybe like a, a walking tall type movie where it was like maybe battling the Dixie mafia or something kind of like that. But, but as, as the story progressed and you kind of throw ideas around, we thought, you know what, we're also big fans of, of John Carpenter. And of course, you know, one of his uh, big movies, as far as especially wrestling fans go is they live, you know, with the uh, star Roddy Piper. And, and, uh, um, and so we took an idea of, you know, what if I always say our movie, I feel like is the, the Magnificent Seven meets They Live. If those two worlds collided, what would that movie, you know, look like that story? And, and I think we, we hit a pretty good, uh, uh, we hit the mark pretty well with this. That sounds like a good elevator pitch comparing yeah. both those two movies together and just slamming yeah. them and say, and there's a bunch of wrestlers. Yeah. Kick yeah. Crap out of people. Like, oh, yeah. We, I'm, yeah. We, yeah, we actually, you know, the tagline for the film, uh, which I give Luther all the credit for, he came up with, was uh, you know, an alien force came to conquer. They had no idea this bunch was in town. <laughs> so, so if you take that and, uh, you know, and you think, and, and so we always, that's the way I always set up the story is like, if you, you know, we, we have a very uh, obvious wrestling story in the movie. Like I said, there's a lot of great wrestling footage in the film uh, because obviously our target audience is, is the wrestling, wrestling fan. And, um, but we also, you know, I had that question. Okay, what if what if you throw the sci-fi element in there, and what if you know this this group of veteran wrestlers comes together for this final tour, kind of like we played off a little bit of the Expendables, how you know Stallone brings all those '80s action heroes back together. We kind of brought a bunch of the the wrestlers from the '80s and '90s together, and so, but it's like, what if they, you know, they're go, they're just they're moving along through their world and all of a sudden their world takes a hard turn. And now they're, they, you know, they find themselves in this small Florida town that's where this alien menace is starting to take over. And they have a choice whether they either, they can, you know, they don't really have any allegiance to the, to the small town. So they can just leave and go on about their way or they can stand and, and fight with the town to take back the town. And it's pretty obvious which one we decide to do. <laughs> you obviously got back in your van, you drove away and yeah, that's exactly. the end of the movie. Yeah, there you go. Long, folks. It's it was a, a pretty it's short a hell of a road trip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got gas, and they were like, "Who wants snacks?" And then they left. Yeah. <laughs> what we figured that wouldn't be as good of a story. So yeah, but, uh, it doesn't sound like uh, something people really want to be. Interested yeah, in. yeah. Russell's getting gas and eating snacks. To be honest, yeah. actually, that does sound like a pretty good show too. So I think we have exactly. something. The, the spinoff, the sequel. Exactly, the, uh, exactly. You know. But uh, but man, that sounds amazing. And now I was talking to you previously on the phone about this, and you recently had kind of like a red carpet situation. Yeah, you know, yeah. We are the movie. Yeah. And describe the feeling of seeing this because you obviously put in the work, you put in yeah. the effort, you're hoping it's going to be good because yes. let's be honest, we have seen wrestles in movies in the past. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they were stinking. <laughs> right. They were, and, let's be honest. We'll, yeah. Let's be honest. Absolutely. Here. Let's you be know? honest. You know? and, Not until like really The Rock and then John yeah. Cena and then Batista. Like it, we started getting a trend of, wait a minute. These guys, if they're given the right circumstances, can right. perform. If they're giving a poor script and a poor story, well, they're not going to be able to give the audience what they want. Right. Obviously, right. you understand your audience. You're yeah, and and, uh, and, and I'll guess, circle back around. Guess. Yeah, I'll circle back around to the to the the, the theatrical premiere we had uh, last weekend up in Detroit. Uh, but but that's that's a great point that you talk about. There is uh, a, a lot of times in the past, and that's what was one of our main driving forces for us to continue to, to make sure this movie got finished and got out there because we actually did our initial, uh, you know, they were called principal photography. We actually did the bulk of that right before the pandemic. 
And then oh, obviously wow. we had we had to shut down for almost two years because of the pandemic, like everybody else did. And um, and then we came back and we, we finished the rest of it. It gave us a chance to kind of look at what we had, retool that some, uh, keep the best of that and then adjust some other stuff we feel like wasn't working. And so in the end, you know, the, we, we tried to make the best out of that situation, which I feel like we did. But we I, honestly, what you just said earlier, you know, Steve, was we wanted to make a movie. We were so tired of seeing movies where all you see if a wrestling fan wants to see a wrestling movie, you usually see one of two things. You see the very dark side of the wrestling industry, or you see it being completely made fun of in, in a very hokey manner. Or you see a movie that was just done really, really bad. And, uh, you know, and 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 so, you know, we, we just we were bound to determine we wanted to make a movie that showed this side of the wrestling business. You show the wrestlers in, in the ring and, and that 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 world, which the wrestling fan obviously knows that that part of the story. But what they don't typically get to see is how do these guys, you know, how do they um, live in the world, uh, you know, personally uh, outside of the ring? And, and, and so I always go back to and once again, I give Luther a lot of credit for this because when we were thinking, OK, what, you know, we got to minimize down to the fewest words possible for trying to explain the theme of this movie to someone as far as like the story. What's the heart of the story? And, and the heart of the story is, is the fact that, you know, here's a group of guys that come together. And all because they love, they have this passion for professional wrestling, and that's how they become friends and and and, and become comrades and comrades. And they they stand side by side, they stand up for each other, they look out for each other. It's very much, and I always say they love each other like family, you know. And and like family, they can butt heads at times too. But but when it comes time to to stand side by side and look out for each other, that's what these guys do. And so the real heart of the movie is the camaraderie, the friendship, and the loyalty that comes from. You know, when you, you're a bunch of like minded people together, you know, I always say going in the same direction and the same lane for the same reason. And that's what these guys are as a group. And and so that's a part of the story we wanted to tell that we never ha have seen told in the wrestling in a yeah, wrestling movie. True. And, you know, so we wanted to see when we, we wanted to show the wrestling uh, audience that side. And, and do it the way that really celebrates everything that's really good about wrestling. You know, I, I, my main thing when I was up, we were up at the uh, theatrical premiere last weekend, I kept saying to the, 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 the great fans who showed up was um, that, you know, we, we've all seen enough of the bad of wrestling. Yeah, you know, I, I won't. We wanted to make a movie. And my goal, I know mine and Luther's goal for this film is for people who who, who love wrestling the way we love pro wrestling to watch a movie and come out feeling good about the fact that they love pro wrestling. And, and I feel like we really, really did hit that mark. I really do. And uh, we made a fun movie. I really believe it's a fun ride. Uh, but um, but it's, it's you know, we we put a lot of, we've seen a lot of bad movies. I've, I've been an actor for quite a while. I've worked on some bad movies I've, and, and TV shows. I've worked on some really good ones too, you know? And uh, so, you know, I've, I brought all that experience to the table. I learned a lot as being a, a really a producer. First time I've, I've produced a couple other things, but never to this magnitude. So, um, but uh, so I learned a whole lot, but, but the main thing is that, you know, we wanted to make a movie that's one, like I said, I, I go back to, if, if you love pro wrestling the way we love pro wrestling, whether you're a fan or you're someone in the business or, you know, someone in the business or, or, or whatever, we wanted to make a movie that, that, you know, it's a 90 minute film. We didn't make, we didn't try to make war and peace. You know, <laughs> we, we made a movie that's about 90 <laughs> minutes long. And, and we wanted to make a movie that was a fun ride that when you came out of it, you go, wow, you know what? That really makes me feel good about, about loving pro wrestling, you know? And uh, so, and, and so I segue into, uh, we had our theatrical premiere last weekend up and we've partnered with um, such a great opportunity for us because most independent films, the, the, our size uh, and we, we, you know, we're, funded our film ourselves we went out we got we have uh, our executive producer we have one sole investor for the film and and we had as far as independent films go on on our level we had a, a very respectable budget to work with and we really tried to make the most out of that so you know we, we didn't make a movie that was just made for for pennies or whatever i mean you know we had a good bu working budget to work with um and we, we tried to make that really really stretch as much as we could um and we called in a lot of favors and thank goodness we you know, a lot of people answered that call but but uh but we partnered with imagine entertainment theaters which are is one of the top 10 largest theater uh chains in the country even though they're only in the five mid upper midwestern states uh which is michigan minnesota wisconsin illinois and indiana but uh they're one of the top 10 theater chains because they have such a strong presence in those five states so to be able to do an exclusive partnership with them 
it was really, really just a huge feather in our cap because they, their marketing team really promoted it well. We uh, we debuted in three three cities, uh, three of their big locations, one in Detroit, when they, which is a uh, Canton location. Canton is, I think, it's a, uh, a, a, a kind of like a sub area of Detroit there, and then. Um, and then one in Indiana and one in Minnesota. So uh, and we had a great turnout. Uh, Tonga came up. Ernest Miller came up. Luther and I came we went up. So we were there and we had we did a live appearance Friday night and Saturday night for all the fans who came out. Uh, and we actually watched the movie with the fans and uh, it just had a really, really great turnout. We had a really great reaction from the fans. And uh, and, you know, I'm humble enough and, and I live enough in the real world to know that. Uh, I mean, I feel like I can read people pretty well, which we learned to do in the wrestling business. But, but you know, I you expect people to talk well about your film if they if they if they come see it live at the premiere, you know. But 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 you know, you you, you don't expect them to come out and say, "Man, that really sucked." But but you know, just reading people's reaction, genuinely, yeah, I feel like people overall did really enjoy the film. And um, and like I said, we were really big on making a movie that is a fun ride. As a matter of fact, one that was for the general audience. Uh, there's really, I mean, literally no profanity in this movie. There's no over-the-top gross humor. And what I mean by that is like no projectile vomiting or anything like that. I, I know, you know, and it's not that we're, no, no, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, that it, in, in, a, in a story where that works, there's a place for that, then sure, yeah. you know, it, but it just, I, it wasn't, there wasn't, in our, it wasn't in our story. So it's not like we tried so hard not to have that. It's just our story didn't seem to have that. So, um, but, you know, we, so we, but I always say, if you watch the, um, uh, the trailer, uh, pretty much the most intense action in our film is in the trailer. So if you see the trailer and the trailer, you know, you're cool with everything in the trailer. I promise you, you'll be perfectly fine with the film. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's a, there's a lot of pro wrestling. There's a lot of good, we, there's a lot, you get to see us throw a lot of kicks and punches. Uh, there's a lot of gunfire and explosions. So uh, it's, it's a fun ride all the way around. Oh man. You know, I can't wait. And I, you know, as we, right now we can't, the general public cannot see this movie cr- just right yet. now, correct? Right. We actually are in our final negotiations with our distribution company, which uh, I'm, I'm, and maybe I can come back on as soon as we finalize that, uh, which should be in the next week or two. Uh, and so, and all we're doing is just finally, you know, just finalizing the numbers as far as the partnership goes there. Um, and once we get that uh, locked in, we're looking right now, if we, if we stay on track uh, to have a, um, a streaming release on all streaming platforms, probably around mid to late July. So, but I'd love to come back on once we have yeah. that definite date and let you guys know because uh, we're really going to be promoting that. And uh, and this is, you know, like I said, you know, see, it's one of the reasons why I'm so glad and so thankful that you allowed me to come on and have some time to talk about this because we really did. We made this movie, as I say, you know, at the risk of sounding a little, you know, sentimental here, but we really did make it as a love letter to the re- the people that love wrestling the way we do. And um, and we know there's a ton of people out there that love professional wrestling. Uh, if 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 you were like me, I grew up as a kid. I, I loved wrestling for as long as I can remember, you know. And I had some great memories with my twin brother and my dad watching wrestling together. Uh, I never really even seriously thought I'd be in the wrestling business. Uh, I dreamed of it when I was a kid, but as I got older, I was like. And I grew up watching Florida Championship Wrestling from Florida and Georgia Championship Wrestling, and I was just like, "Man, those are some tough cats." I don't, I don't know if I could do that. You know? so, <laughs> but I found out I was, I found out I was pretty good at taking a beating, so you know, <laughs> it worked out okay. <laughs> what a strange thing to say! I, I found know, out yeah. I was good at uh, taking a I beating. Take a, I could take a lot of pain, you know. So, yeah, uh, well, not I'm excited. Hopefully, in July, yeah. we uh, we get yeah, that going, yeah. so we can we everyone can enjoy this movie. And you brought up wrestling, so obviously, yeah. as I said off the top, you are glacier and yeah, so absolutely. let's find this story out how in the world are you brought into wcw and then someone says to you hey we want you to be this character glacier which i think eric bischoff has said that it was kind of a a, a version of sub-zero from mortal oh, yeah, combat yeah, to yeah. hit that audience of kids who are interested in uh characters and masks in of course glacier but how'd you end up in wcw and how do you end up being glacier yeah, we are. I broke into wrestling in April of 1987. I just finished playing college football at Valdosta State University in, in down in South Georgia. And um, and, and I just, uh, once again, back then, there weren't a lot of wrestling schools, that not, none that I knew of back then. I got kind of invited into the business because uh, I had a pretty successful college football career, had a pretty successful martial arts uh, you know, uh, run too. And cause I fought full contact karate when I was in, in, in uh, college for a little while too. And so, um, so I kind of got invited in and, uh, and I fell into it. I loved it from day one I was teaching school 
and wrestling on every night and every weekend and that I could. And eventually in 1990, I decided to move to Atlanta to really go to where the opportunity was, which is what I tell every young wrestler that sometimes you got to go where the opportunity is. The opportunity is not going to come find you a lot of times. And so um, I moved to Marietta, Georgia. I got a teaching job, teaching middle school. And one of the first things I did was go to Lexington Sting's gym, main event fitness and sign up there because that was where everybody, all the wrestlers were working out, you know? And, um, and so, uh, you know, I had a good reputation on the independent scene, met a lot of guys, a lot of guys that came up, we came up together. Um, uh, that group, uh, there was basically me, uh, Disco Inferno, Scotty Riggs, uh, Bagwell, uh, all, all kind of came up together, you know, during that time in Atlanta. And, um, and so, uh, and luckily, uh, you know, I think Bagwell was the first one to really get into WCW and then Disco came on. But through all that, I met Diamond Dallas Page and, uh, and Diamond, uh, Dallas and I became really great friends. We're still really, really great friends to this day. I, I always call Dallas like my crazy big brother, you know, and because uh, um, he, he has he has been such a driving force in my life in so many ways. And, and through Dallas, I got to know Dusty and, uh, and, and which was an amazing story because Dusty was was my my two childhood heroes were Evil Knievel and Dusty Rhodes. And uh, so, uh, but, um, but you know, I, I just, I got to know Dallas. Dallas got to see my work ethic firsthand, uh, which he's really, really big on t- to this day. And, um, and my, you know, my, my number one favorite quote uh, is, and I, I have a whole notebook full of quotes just because as a teacher and a coach, you know, it kind of helps you hammer the lessons home sometimes. Yeah. But my number one favorite quote is it, it's in, in my, my college athletic trainer is the person who told me this named Jim Madalino. He said, uh, he said, you ever heard the, the phrase, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I said, yeah, of course. You know, and he said, well, I think there's another part to that that makes it a lot more true. And I said, what's that? And he said, it's not necessarily what you know or who you know. It's who's willing to say they know you. It's who's willing to put their name and reputation on the line to maybe open up a given, you know, open up a door a little bit so you can have an opportunity. Then it's up to you to what you do with that opportunity. But, you know, it's if, if People, you got to earn that trust to where people are willing to put their name and reputation out there for you. So I learned that from Dallas. Dallas and Eric has, has been, you know, heavily documented. We're great friends during that era and still are. And and, um, and they did live very close together in the same neighborhood, only a few houses apart. And so um, uh, Dallas and I, had 90, Dallas, uh, uh, this is probably a week before Christmas. Of, of, in 95, we were in this, the big mall in Atlanta shopping, Christmas shopping, me and Dallas, and we stopped to eat at this little pizza place. And um, and I told him that, Dallas, I said, you know, Dallas, I'm thinking about starting to try to put a lot more martial arts into, my, into what I do in the ring. Because up to that point, I hadn't really done that a lot. And uh, even though I had a very heavy martial arts background. And uh, he goes, I'll never forget, he's got a you know, slice of pizza. And he's like, bro, he said, well, that'd be great if you knew some of that stuff. And if you know Dallas, he didn't say stuff. He used another word, but <laughs> but uh, but um. And I said, and and at that moment, I realized I had never really talked to Dallas that much about my martial arts background because it just wasn't something that we talked about. You know, we were always talking wrestling, and so um, he just said, "Well, you know, Erickson know that." You know, and I said, "I didn't know that." So anyway, he said, he, "I got, I gave him all the information." He said, "Well, let me run this by Eric because this, you know, this is something that you know uh, might." you know, might pique his interest in it. And of course it did, thankfully. And, um, and he said, well, let's get to the holidays and, uh, we'll, I want to meet, we'll have a meeting. Uh, Cause I'd gotten to know, I'd met Eric a few times through that, just with Dallas, his house and stuff. And, um, and he basically said, you know, right after the holidays, let's schedule a dinner and we'll sit down and talk. And so it was that first week of, of January and there was a little steakhouse restaurant right outside their neighborhood. I went and met Eric, just me and him kind of in the back of the restaurant and, uh, not like any private area, just, we just happened to get seated kind of like in the back yeah. of the, the, but, um, and, and it was a very long conversation. We, I bet it, as I remembered, it was, it seemed like it was almost a three hour meeting that we had the dinner, but we talked, it was because we had a lot in common. We taught martial arts for probably the first hour or so before we even got into wrestling. And, uh, I talked about the people, the same people we knew or knew of and stuff like that. And, um, and that's how it kind of began. And, uh, and I, I guess in that moment, I, I, I even though I didn't, I didn't look at it so much as a formal interview. I, it, I think it kind of was. And, but at that point, honestly, Steve, I was ready. I, I, you know, my first few years in the business, I wasn't ready. I knew I wasn't ready. But by this time, I'd had you know almost ten years in the wrestling business. I, I'd wrestled in Japan. I, you know, and I, I knew I was ready. And and so, and I think that came across to, to Eric. And so, um, but at the time, I'd gotten out of teaching. I was actually one of my other mentors, Chip Smith, who's to this day still one of the top sports performance trainers in the world um he was the head athletic director of uh this very prestigious country club called the atlanta athletic club and he had brought me on as his fitness director so i had a really good job uh, and i was wrestling as much as i wanted to 
But I remember Eric saying, he just said, um, you know, and this was January 96, you know, the very infancy of the internet. I don't even know if the internet was officially even out at that point. But anyway, it was, I remember him saying like, you know, I want to, I want to sign you to a contract, like literally like that, that meeting. And, and he said, and, uh, he said, you don't even have to quit your job right now. He said, just, uh, um, we'll just keep it under wraps. He said, here's all I want you to do. I want you to completely, he said, are you still wrestling on the independent scene? I said, yes. I said, I'm very active. He said, all I want you to do is just completely disappear from the independent wrestling scene over the next few months, cancel all your bookings. Please don't tell anybody why, just you know, be professional. Tell them you're stepping away for a while or whatever. And I remember I looking at it, I remember I, I literally said to him, I went, I can do that. Uh. <laughs> and so, and that was the beginnings of what would become Glacier and, and the whole blood runs cold uh, persona. And, and of course, Mortis and Wrath and, and Ernest Miller and all that. So, uh, but yeah, it was, um, it, it was life changing, but I, I always say, you know, I, I, it's what I tell all young wrestlers. I mean, I was ready. I was ready. I knew I was ready. I wasn't, I wasn't cocky, but I was confident. And when I went in there, I, I knew, I knew I was going to present well because I knew I'd earned the right to be there. I'd earned the right to have that meeting. And, um, and I was nervous as all get up, but, but I, I just, I knew in my heart at that point, you know, I felt like I was good enough to be at that next level. And, uh, and I, and, and so it's one of those things where I didn't go in there. That wasn't the time to really be humble, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't cocky, but I was very confident. And I, I basically conveyed the area like, if you bet, if you bet on me, I promise you, I'll I'll come through for you. And uh, and he did. And and um and granted, you know the 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 whole did it turn out exactly like you know, I, completely like I wanted? No, but I don't know of really any wrestlers whose career whose career did turn out exactly like you wanted. <laughs> but but I can say this, Steve. You know, I know there were people that were fans of the gimmick. There were people who who weren't fans of it. And I understand that because uh, that's how wrestling works. I mean, you're never going to please everybody. And and uh, but I will say this. Um, you know, being Glacier still to this day, you know, I still do appearances and, uh, and now it's going on almost 30 years. And, um, and I, I'm so proud that I was the one that Eric trusted to, to be Glacier. And, uh, and I'm so thankful to the wrestling fans for embracing me because it got the, you know, it got, it allowed the kid from South Georgia to live one heck of a dream. And because I got to live that dream, I, got to get a chance to make a movie about what I love and what I know a lot of other people love and make a movie that, like I said, that hopefully will make you smile and proud to be a wrestling fan. Oh yeah, man. That's a, that's a hell of a story. It could be, it, <laughs> it, no, I love it so much because you're right about that. 30 years ago later, we're still talking about Glacier and there are some people who had say characters that people are like, Oh, that was terrible, but we don't right. talk about anymore. We don't look, right. we don't seek out. We don't hope to get an interview. We don't go to meet and greet and see them. Yeah. We hope, to talk to Glacier. We hope to see Glacier. Uh, well, versus, thank you, man. That means you know, a lot. That means a lot. You know, lot. if Reese was walking around in the Yeti costume, I would yeah. totally talk to him, but I don't yeah. see him very often in the Yeti costume. <laughs> no, humping Hulk Hogan from behind. We don't see that. Uh, we don't. We, trust me, we still razz him about that. So. Oh, well, I hope you do. I hope you do. I hope you text him often and, and just send him a picture of him humping something because it's something we still, all wrestling fans, still talk about. Now, let's talk about this for a second before we wrap this up in a little while is you are a professional you know karate kickboxer all this background to what you are now mm. they're asking you to be this type of character a yeah. glacier on television mm -hmm. but at the same time is it difficult for you to pull back what you're professionally known to do but you're out there trying not to hurt someone right right is that it, it, was that very hard for you to pull off it was it was extremely extremely difficult to do because because you know I'm I'm not necessarily I'm a pretty decent sized guy you know I'm six two and, and when I was in WCW I was usually you know I was around you know two forty five to two fifty that was pretty much my 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 weight pretty much the whole time there and um and I and I I carry my weight and, and Eric has talked about this you know what I'm saying I mean about you know how Ernest and I both if uh, you know I think some people when they see me when they meet me I'm the, probably about the size I think that most of them would expect. Ernest is someone who's who's considerably bigger, I think, than most people think he is. You know, they they, they see Ernest when you see him in person, he's a little bit taller than me, and he's a he's like two sixty. I mean, he's a big guy, you know. And uh, um, it's just like with Dallas. Dallas is a legitimate six five. I think I don't think most people realize that until they meet him. That you know, he's he's a big he's dude, dude. You know, yeah. And, uh, and and Jake, Jake's a big big dude. Yeah. But uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, it was again because I'd come from you know. Uh, you know, a, a world where, you know, I, I tried, you know, tournament, um, martial arts and because I came from a, 
um, the two instructors who, who are still very, you know, much you know, uh, mentors in my life today. They're both in their 80s. And they could, I still wouldn't mess with either one of them. But, uh, but you know, they, they basically, I learned how to, you know, kind of go full speed in the real world. And so that's why I wanted to fight full contact karate when, you know, when I was in college, because I was like, you know, like, I, I you know, I want to see one. I want to see you know if if I'm as good as I think I am, and two, I want to see if I can take a punch. You know? <laughs> and uh, and I, I realized I could, you know. But uh, but no, it was it was it was really it's super hard. It's the hardest thing to teach people in professional wrestling how to throw a, a good punch and make it look good. And I always say, you know, your goal is you're hitting a small bony object with a much smaller bony object, and not and try not hurt hurt make it look great and still not kill each other. I mean, it's very, very hard to do. Now you take, you know, a, a big leg and you try to, you know, get it up to someone's face. And, and, and you know, that's why I actually switched to a more of a, a shin pad type. Well, a lot of guys wear shin, or, you know, guys and girls wear shin pads now. And some of them use them, some of them don't. And I, and I get that so much for it just works for their outfit. But but I, I switched to actually amateur wrestling shoes when, when I first, the first few years of Glacier, because I wanted to do everything I could to minimize protect the other person and, 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 you know, the, the crepe soles on pro wrestling boots can cut you wide open if you get kicked with them in the, in the face and stuff. So I, you know, I wanted to, to do everything I could to, to protect, because that's the number one rule in wrestling is, you know, safety, be safe in the ring. And, um, but still, you know, especially with all the pressure I had on me with that interest and everything and the buildup of all the, like I had to make sure my stuff looked good. And so, you know, and Eric, Eric was always just like, just go out there and kick full speed. You know, I'd rather it look good. And I was like, well, yeah, but you don't have to walk back to that locker room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, man, you're kicking Mortis in the face. He's not going to be like, yeah. thanks for that. Like, yeah, he's not yeah. going to go back. Dude, you broke my nose. What yeah. the hell? And, and actually, yeah, well, I was told me to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that wasn't going to fly too much in the locker room, you know. So, uh, no. but um, but you know, and 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 Chris Canyon was who became one of my 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 great great friends, and I miss him so much. I mean, when of course there's a there's a couple of little you know nice little tributes to tips of the hat to Canyon in the movie, and uh, and there's a lot of you know what people commonly call Easter eggs that in the film that uh, I hope wrestling fans enjoy, and uh, and you know I won't spoil them, but keep a lookout for them because because I'm really big on those, and so I made a point to really put several throughout the movie but um but yeah i mean but but when candy and i went out there we still wanted to take care of each other but we did go a little bit of a we went we kind of kicked it into a little bit higher gear i mean we we kicked a little bit harder and we you know just because we knew one we knew we we got to the point where we could we could take that we didn't mind it so much if it was just me and him we still didn't want to knock each other out out there but uh but we came close a few times <laughs> but um oh, but yeah but you know it's, it's the same thing in wrestling you say you know there's there's you know you can sometimes you can hit a little harder in safe areas. You know, I mean, if I'm kicking somebody, you know, here or in the back, you know, it, it's not like kicking them upside the head, you know? So, uh, so yeah, we, you, you kind of uh, pick and choose, you know, um, maybe the, uh, the velocity of some of the kicks. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we wrap this up, I have a question though, as well, when you came in as Glacier in the WCW, you were part of, you know, you had Mortis, you had uh, James Mitchell, you yeah, had Bandy. Clark, yeah. You had all these these different types of characters, but yet at the same exact time on the other channel, you had Steve Austin middle fingering. You had Hulk Hogan in WCW, NWO, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall. What was your relationship like with Hulk Hogan during this time when you're coming in trying to bring in a different set of wrestling characters and he's trying to go from yellow and red and eat your vitamins and say your prayers to let's kick ass. This is going to be real. It's gonna be based in reality, but you're out there with snow flying over you. Yeah. And you know <laughs> what was relationship yeah. like? Did he ever talk to you about this? Now, you know what? I mean, I, I just kind of had like a professional working relationship with uh with, with, with Hogan, never really got to know him on a on a real personal level. But um uh but yeah, I mean you know, the thing was I go back to kind of what Eric was saying during that time, which and I, I agree with this, is you know, I, I think professional wrestling should be uh you know, it's, it's always, I heard it said one time, it's almost like the, when the circus comes to town, you know, there's, there should be something for everybody, you know? And, uh, and I know Eric looked at that as kind of like a, a buffet of, of talent, you know, and you think about it, we had during that era and we really did. And granted when this thing called the NWO happened, we all know that, that everything else kind of took a back seat to that because it was a phenomenon that no one could really predict that it was going to blow up the way it blew up. And, and I was, you know, what was going on with, with, WWF at the time, and we were going through that attitude area. I mean, man, it was 
it was the greatest period of wrestling ever. And, and, and that's, that's not my opinion. That's, that's a lot of other people's opinion. You know? And, and so, you know, I, I knew that I knew what our job was and I knew that, um, you know, when we went out there, our, our job to go out there is, is do something a little bit different, give people a little bit of a, um, like I said, a little bit of something different on the buffet, so to speak, and, uh, and break up a little bit of that. Because as, as we all saw, once it got to where, you know, the NWO started to kind of, you know, really take over everything, then it became kind of a too much of a good thing, you know, <clears throat> and, and, and we all kind of know how that played out. So, uh, you know, it was, I will say this, Steve, um, through all the, I was fortunate to be there through the whole rise and fall of, of Monday Nitro really, you know, and, uh, um, and, and it was, it was, it was great. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And the one thing that I'm so proud of through that whole era is the fact that one, just the friends I made, you know, I mean, the guys you just mentioned, I, I'm still great friends with Brian Clark, with Ernest Miller was one of my, still one of my closest friends, uh, James Vanderberg, Jim Mitchell. I'm, he's one of my just dear, dear friends. So, you know, it was the friendships that were made, which is once again, the inspiration for our, our film, the story of our film. But um, the fact is that, you know, I was so fortunate, like I said, to be a kid from Brunswick, Georgia, which is a small little, you know, not not small, but a smaller beachfront community, you know, in South Georgia over there, um, which it was a great place to grow up. And I still love to go back. But but, you know, here I am. I, I'm an active part of what is you know, arguably one of the greatest rosters of all time. You know, and, and I was is. there. I think it earning, is, honestly. Yeah, 96, our, 97, WCW. Yeah. It's very hard to touch when you had – brawlers high flyers yeah. strongmen karate yeah. mask it, it had like you said a buffet of wrestling and yeah. for a long time in yeah. some companies it was this it was like a machine just like Doop. okay you have muscles yeah. and you're tall Doop. okay your muscles you're tall Doop. Now, <laughs> yeah. cw the time you're talking about had you know big men small men it had everything yeah. you could think of so if no one's yeah. ever watched cw back in the day yeah, it was, it was, you know, Eric, Eric introduced, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, the cruiserweight division. He introduced the, uh, the luchador, you yeah. know, the luchadors, which was, which was awesome for us getting to work with those guys a lot. Um, you know, and, and it was, it was just, you know, the, the whole, everything that, you know, with the, the nitro girls and all that, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a huge spectacle. Everything was, I mean, when it, when it came to town, you know, it may, and the same thing with WWF at the time. I mean, when W, if, you know, We'll just say WWE because I know now that we we refer to it. Yeah, as I can say yeah. Panda Bear is not going to come get us. I right, <laughs> but Maybe. you know, I mean, during that time, because we were competing, we were competing, you know, for that the, you know, that Monday Night War. You know, we're competing for the for the the, the attention of the of the wrestling fan. Uh, you know, the, the, we 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 got to win. Both companies won, and the, and most of all, the fans won. You know, and yeah. and so if if WWE came to town or came anywhere near where you were or WCW, man, it was the hottest ticket in town. And 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 to be someone who was a, a part of that and got to live that at that level and, and get to become uh, colleagues and friends with the likes of, like you said, Hulk Hogan, um, you know, uh, Scott. I, I I had met Scott or you know earlier in my career. I uh, got didn't know Kevin until getting to know him during you know WCW. But just you know, Ric Flair. Randy Savage, you know, just you know, hacksaw Jim Duggan, those yeah, guys all when they came roster. in, you know. Listen, yeah. That roster is insane. Sting. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, it just you know, Ray it goes Mysterio, on and on. And on. Conan, Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Betty, Malenko, Dean Malenko. Psychosis, you could just keep Kuba going. And going. It's like an endless list of yeah. stars. Yeah, Bobby Heenan doing commentary, Dusty oh doing God. commentary he, on he, some he, of my matches. Yeah, Michael yeah. I mean, Buffer. Michael Buffer, yes, Tony Schiavone. I mean, it was just it was you, I mean, it was like you know going to work as hard as it was. And it was a grueling, hard grind of a schedule, but man, I loved it. I loved it. You know, and some of that was just, you know, the, the benefit of being young, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you could yeah, do it, but, but yeah, but you know, I got to see the whole world and, uh, and I still do, uh, because of, of uh, I fell in love with something that, that rewarded me really well and can, it continues to reward me. And, uh, and like, I, keep, I know I keep circling back to the movie, but you know, the unbreakable bunch, like I said, this is a movie that, um, that never would have gotten made. If if I if somebody wouldn't have, you know, spoken up and, and allowed me to come into the wrestling business. And and once I got into the business and I met the people that I met, um, and, and you know, I met Stan Hansen. He and I worked on the my very first film I ever worked on was No Holds Barred. And uh I was basically just kind of like a featured extra in the you know the bar fight scenes there. And and uh but I got to know Stan really well. And and over the years, Stan was like, Ray, if you ever make a movie, just let me know. And I, so when it came time to write the script, 
I made sure we were, I wrote a roll with Stan in mind. And, uh, and when it came time to make that call, you know, thankfully Stan was like, he was on board, you know, <laughs> yeah, man, 30 years later, he was yeah. like, Oh, you remembered I said that to you. Yeah. Uh, and he loved it. You know, I, I actually, we were talking, I talked about this on another podcast recently was uh, Luther and I were in, and I forget what year it was. You may know, but, uh, uh, but it was when WrestleMania was in Miami and, uh, it was, uh, gosh, like I think recently? around 2000, like, no, so, so like 2010, Rock, maybe. Yeah, it was, it was, it was when, uh, down there, for, I forget what year it was, but uh, anyway, we saw Stan at, at you know, down there and, and, he, and that's when he reminded me, he was just like, uh, of course it, it was just an idea that at that time for the film. And he was like, well, right. You know, if you ever do a movie, you know, just let me know. I'd love to be in it. And, and so every time I would see him, he would always say that, but I, I would keep saying, well, Stan, just hold tight, just hold tight. You know? And, and, and he did. And, let me get yeah. my pencil out and I'll write a yeah. movie for you, Stan. All right. You know what? And I tell you what, and when I called him, uh, he was, uh, he was, he was right there. He was like, you know, count me in, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the great things that happened, like I had no idea that him and Tonga were great friends, but they had not seen each other uh, for, for many years. So when, when he came to, to Stan came to shoot for about five days, you know, and we were all, we all stayed at this extended stay hotel. I mean, like I said, we were on a, um, you know, as far as movies go, we were on a pretty limited budget, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, um, to see those guys, you know, kind of rekindle their friendship and think the, the unexpected, you know, great things that came from from working hard to make this movie. Um, boy, I tell you what, it's just created some really special moments. And and um, and, you know, and we came up with the title of the film, The Unbreakable Bunch. And and, and I give Luther you know, credit for that as well. I mean, I, he's he's a great idea, man. Um, we, we had a different title in the beginning that was a little bit more of. Um, it was called the replaceables and, uh, and it's like, you know, cause they say in wrestling, you know, you, you, everybody's always replaceable, you know, and it, but it had a little bit of a negative kind of negative kind of, we want something a little bit more positive and, yeah. and then replaceable sounded a lot like the replacements, which was a movie that, you know, Keanu Reeves was, it was played a, yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, a football uh, movie. It'll be like, yeah. Hey, we're in, we're, we're going to replace Keanu Reeves now. Right. Gene Hackman. Exactly. Which and I love that movie. Every time Great it's movie. on, I watch it, but, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, so we, 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 we went around, we batted around its names and, and Luther finally, he, he hit on that one day. And I said, I said, Man. And, and so in the movie, his character is like an older character who actually is telling the whole story of what happened kind of to this young reporter kind of, and he narrates this story. And uh, so he's, his character is a lot older in the beginning. And, uh, but, um, but, you know, one of the things that uh, he says is that, you know, and, it, and it's, even though it's not something that's a necessarily a, a Pick from the wrestling business. I, I believe it is true of the wrestling businesses. He says, you know, that, you know, we, you earn the title unbreakable in the wrestling business when you just continue through the grind, you know, you know, year after year. Uh, and, and once you, you know, successfully continue through that grind, eventually you earn the title unbreakable. And so, uh, which I, I believe is very true. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, I imagine. But the, you know? But uh, but yeah, and before I forget, I mean, just as far as uh, our social media, where everybody can follow over everything is, um, if you just search the Unbreakable Bunch movie, uh, and our website is theunbreakablebunchmovie.com, and uh, Robert McLaren, who's uh, been a great friend of mine for a long time, he's DDP's uh, webmaster for all of his all of his stuff, and uh, if you've ever seen Dallas's stuff, it's great. So um, when I knew I needed to get someone to do our website, I went after who I thought was the best, and um, and our website is very fun, but it has all the the social media icons on there and you can just uh, search the unbreakable bunch movie on any social media platform and you'll find uh, our, our, our page and please support us. Please go to the YouTube channel and, and like the video, the trailers and, uh, and the channel, because that's what will help us be able to go into negotiate deals for some other theater areas. Um, you know, once we, once the, our, our commitment with the, um, Imagine Entertainment kind of runs its course, and and you know we have their blessing to branch out outside of those five states, uh, like say in the southeast, like Georgia and Florida. Uh, we want to be able to go to those theater theater companies and say, hey, here's the numbers that we had. Um, you know, let's let's make a deal to get this in your theater. So so by by supporting you know our YouTube channel and supporting the um, our social media channels, uh, just just know that it will help us and being able to take that information and go sell this movie to other theaters so that we can get it uh, on the big screen, hopefully somewhere close to where you are. Well, let's get that going because I want to see this movie. I want to see these guys beat the crap out of each other and just save the town, <laughs> save the city. That's oh, right. Man. That's I right. hope uh, the I hope your blood wasn't running cold that day. But I, <laughs> uh, that was a terrible joke. You know, it's good. <laughs> I love it though. I love <laughs> I it. But, uh, 
I, I will say this one thing that's, uh, you know, with the um, when people see the poster, it's funny. I mean, the poster is kind of an action sci fi film poster, and where we all have guns in our hands, and right in the middle of the poster is Tonga, you know, with a gun. And it's the one that I, it's the comment I see so much of people say, well, like, you know, why does Tonga need a gun? I mean, he's Tonga, you know, and I, I always say, well, you know, you understand, like, no one knows Tonga's reputation and what and, and his uh, his skills better than us. So if Tonga has a gun in the movie, trust me, there's a very good reason why Tonga has a gun in the movie. But I will say this too: we, you, as a wrestling fan, if you're a fan of Tonga's, you will not be disappointed because he does a lot of great stuff without the gun in his hand too. That, that I'm sure will please people. <laughs> I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess. But if he doesn't bite a man's nose off, I will start a GoFundMe for the sequel where he does bite a man's nose off. I will pay for the special effects. We will get a close up. We will do it. If yeah, I have, I'll do it. Do it. Do it. That sounds good. We we'll have to talk to him about that and see what, see what yeah, he we'll, says. Yeah, we'll get all the movie first. We'll be out first, and then we'll talk talk yeah. more. But I gotta say, thank you so much for sharing your passion about your movie about Glacier because there are so many more questions I have about your movie and especially about Glacier. But yeah, we'll I'd talk love about to come that back. at a later yeah. date. Again, thank you so much for sharing. I'm C. Fall. He's Glacier. Remember, check out his website and of course the movie Unbreakable Bunch. Check it out on all socials. It's there, folks, for you to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.